Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Welcome to Divine Soldiers of Christ Bible Study. Today is our Bible study Tuesday. Where we dig deep into the Bible, into the Word of God. Everyone, you are welcome. Bless the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good and His message endures forever. Everyone, you are welcome. You are welcome. Merry Christmas again. And prosperous Happy New Year. As we dig deep into this Word of God, I pray that a lot of you will. I pray that a lot of you will uh, join us. And uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Was well, happy new year, and I hope you celebrated well and be safe out there. Don't do what God will not like. <laughs> this is the verse of Christ Bible study, and we're about to start. And only all the time we start with music. First of all, let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank God for what He has done and what He's about to do because it's good and His mercies endure us forever and ever for keeping us alive all these months, all these years. We are grateful, God. We bless your holy name. We love you. There's nothing we can, we can't thank you enough. We can't bless your name enough, but we are grateful. Little one, we are brought God, accepted as a sweet smelling server. As we're about to eat buffet, to talk with you, to ask you questions, please teach us so that after us and done, you will gain all the glory and we will not leave the way we're signing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go. <laughs> Cabo to told in Ono, Obiang Wale Kanjabuya, Ezekiel and Alekin, Ebe Merekan. Cabo to told in Ono, Obiang Wale Kanjabuya, Ezekiel and Alekin, Ebe Merekan. Some praises in my mouth, I always sing them with all joy. King of kings, I set my praises as you grant me life to live. Thanks of praises in my love, I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, and I set my praises as you grant me life to live. Oh Lord my God, we worship you in reverence and humility. Great and mighty are your works in our life. For many science, for many great, we worship you. Dear Father, thank you. Songs of praises in my mouth, I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises, as you grant me life to live. Songs of praises in my mouth, I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises, as you grant me life to live. Thank you for keeping my life back. I love you. Yes, and I appreciate you. I really love With you. all my heart. I love you. I let my life before you and ask that, that you, you have, have your way in my life. And make me all that you want me to be. In, in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, give me the spiritual discernment and guidance. Make me sensitive to you. I need you, Lord. Feel me, please, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me God's divine intervention. I need God's divine intervention. Help me to recognize your leading in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Begin and revive me daily. Help me to receive insight. Please, turn my night today. Yes. In my prayer, I just say, oh God, for everyone alive, I will know please, for our prayers, oh God. I will be filled with wisdom and the grace of God Thank 
Ma go to Tobi Nanum, Obi and Wale Kanja Buya, Ezekes and Alekele, Ebi Mere Kanjendo. I go to Tobi Nanum, Obi and Wale Kanja Buya, Ezekes and Alekele, Ebi Mere Kanjendo. Sounds of praises in my mouth, I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises as you write me life to live. Some of praises in my mouth, so I will sing them with all joy. King of kings, I serve my praises as you write me life to live. And that is the end of our music and um, I will take it back a little bit because we we'll finish with it too and now we're going to our Bible study my brothers and sisters let us pray Father in the name of Jesus we thank you 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 for you are the reason for the season. You are the best gift that never stop giving. You are the best giver. You are the best gift. You are the best of everything. You are a perfect God. You are the one that gives the perfect gift and the perfect God. I thank you. I thank you. I bless your holy name. I worship you for all you have done in our life. For this is no celebration, for just providing for us, for giving us joy, for allowing us to get uh, to uh, enjoy and um, get together with our family. For vacation, for time out from work, for the peace of just being home <laughs> and not to drive back and forth to work. God, I thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, for, for allowing my ear to be in your mouth and to speak audibly for me to hear you. Thank you. Thank you for your leading, for your guidance, for speaking, for not just speaking, but allowing me to hear you. Who am I to hear you, God? But you've been speaking and I've been hearing you. And when you lead me, I'll go. When you guide me, I will go. When you say, I go, Father, thank you for, for leading. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for telling me, go. And thank you for allowing me to go because... I would have been disobedient with my flesh, but you've been so faithful for everything I'm doing today. You made it possible, Father. You made it possible. You made me who I am today. You are God. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, God, I thank you. I just come and say thank you for all you have used your servant, your vessel of grace, your, 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 your daughter to do. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you for everyone online that are listening now, that are about to watch later, that will be all social media that will come across this preaching and this Bible study. I thank you for their salvation they were going to receive. I say I thank you for the people that receive salvation that were going to think about their life and have remorse and change to live a disciplined life, to live a holy life, to live a life of forbidden to you, to live a life to fear you. Thank you. Thank you. Help us. To be you, help us to do your will, help us to hear your voice, help us to listen to your voice, help us to obey your voice, help us to do what you call us to do in this simple world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we're moving into uh, 2023, we bless your holy name. You've been so faithful. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Help me. I'm sick with my ear to your ear. To tell me what you want your children to here for the new year. What is the message for their new year? I've had a way I'm here, oh God. Here I am. Send me. Use me all. Use me all. Here I am, oh God. Use me all as your vessel. Use me all as your as your mouthpiece. Use me all as your cloth, God. Use me all, oh Lord. I can do this before by myself, but I can do absolutely everything with you. But I can do absolutely nothing without you because your joy is my strength. You are good all the time. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for all my children all over the world as a Jew or devout servants of Christ. Thank you for 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 um all all devout servants of Christ all over the world, um, to Brian, Canada branch, Europe branch. God, thank you for what you are doing. For all the people you serve with this ministry, with this church, with this thank you. 
I just want to thank you. And God, I thank you. And I thank you. I thank everyone online. I thank everyone. I bless the holy name of God for God will continue to protect everyone online, their family, everything they are going through. Father, hear their prayer and let them know you are God all by yourself. Please, everyone that's there, they are going through something, Father, just go to their house, go to their home, go to their heart and hear their prayer. Eat as we are different faces, different people where we have different problems. Go to each and every one of, of the, uh, every one of, uh, uh, each and every one's home and heart and life and, and father just do what only you can do and after all said and done they will give all the glory and give testimony in jesus my blessing name my prayer I cover this prayer with the blood of jesus and the whole this prayer wall of fire in the name of jesus heavens you are welcome in my facebook my may god continue to bless you merry christmas my brother merry christmas and prosperous happy new year to you and your family today we're starting our bible study uh learners uh, you are welcome in what uh, what's uh, facebook god bless you as you join my brother god bless you all happy merry christmas and uh, have prosperous happy new year to all of you online all social media youtube Instagram, Facebook. Thank you so much for joining. We are about to start our Bible study. Uh, if you are just joining us, this Divine Soldiers of Christ Nation Church, and uh, we're starting our Bible study today. And the title of the Bible study, if you don't, if you don't follow us, we are going through the Bible from Genesis to Exodus. Now I'm excited. We are in Second Chronicle, and I'm so excited. So our pericope today will be Second Chronicle chapter eleven. We're going to cover chapter eleven. Chapter 12 and chapter 13. Amen. Let's go. We just finish our music and you can go back. That's why it's good to, uh, to do video. You can go back and listen to our music and the prayers. The title today is the story of Rehoboam. The story of Rehoboam. Let's read. Um, we're in Bible study, so we don't rush. We're trying to eat buffet with Jesus Christ. So we take our time to do it. So let's read uh, chapter 1. Uh, second uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter eleven, verse one. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mustered the house of Judah and Benjamin, a hundred and eighty thousand fighting men, to make war against Israel to regain the kingdom for Rehoboam. But this word of the Lord came to Shannon, the man of God, say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, to all the Israelites in Judah and Benjamin, this is what the Lord says, do not go up to fight against your brothers. Go home, every one of you, for this is my doing. So they obeyed the word of the Lord and turned back from marching against Jeroboam and so forth and so on. My brothers and sisters, uh, we're going to start to say, don't fight your brother. Hallelujah, somebody. God, even in infinite mercy, was telling his brothers, uh, he said, don't go and fight your brother. Even if they offended them, be careful now because a lot of time devil will put enmity between you and your brother. But let's go. We'll see what is going on here. Rehoboam's foolishness divided his kingdom and he tried to unite it by force true unity however cannot be forced he tried to force it but true unity however cannot be forced if you want to get unity you don't force it you you talk to people you communicate with people you come loving them with joy loving them with peace and and have that peace uh, spicy your mouth with the word of god and the peace of god you just don't get peace by forcing people them, uh, you know the, you know like see as if you're a uh, 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 the king of king no 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 even god is in mercy will not do that so rebel foolishness divided this kingdom and he tried to reunite it by force true unity my brothers and sister however cannot be forced it must be the free response of willing hearts and how do you have people willing hearts you love them you talk to them with respect you don't just talk to people because you you think that oh i'm quote unquote no 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 let, let me tell you something brothers and sisters you are nobody when i see people do this do this mm, 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 mm. i don't know if you have seen a dead person or you've been to hospital this present time to see what people are going through for you to understand that even the chickens you kill on christmas day the cow and the goat you kill and the turkeys you know they're better than all of us you know why because uh, at least turkey knows they can they will he's gonna be killed on november uh, 
uh, for Thanksgiving in America and chicken cow go to all these times. No, they're going to be killed in Nigeria or all of, uh, over, over the world, Africa, because of Christmas. But we, the human beings, we don't know where God is going to call us. We don't know where we're going. So come on, come on, baby. You got to act right. You got to obey God. You got to keep on depending on God because only God owes our life in his hand. Hallelujah. That's why I love that song. He got a whole word in his hand. He got a whole wide word in his hand. God got a whole word in his hand. He got a whole word in his hand. He got a you and you in his hand. He got every one of you in his hand. He got a, all of all of us. In, so he got all of us in his hand. My God will never let us fail and uh, his mercies will continue to be forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, this, uh, God is good here. Oh, this is good. Sorry guys, the computer was dying on me. So he got, I'm sorry for the, every time you do your work for God, he yeah, calls it yet, God devil. But anyway, we give God the glory. And like I said, God got the whole world in his hand. He got the life in your hand, in his hand. So it must be uh, where you want to find, look for unity in whatever you're doing, your family, wherever you are. You, it must be, uh, uh, it must not be first. It must be true unity, however, cannot be false. It must be the freest response of willing heart. If you want the, the loyalty of 
uh, employees, children, or anyone else in your charge, when you are in charge, win their respect through love. Like I said before, instead of trying to gain their submission through force by fire, by thunder. No, it doesn't work like that. You're going to lose your respect. You're going to lose everything that you got in life because you're not treating people right. You got to treat people right to get their, the best of them in the name of Jesus. So whatever power you have, don't use that power against them. Uh, uh, your subordinate or against people that you know that they will not be able to talk back to you or, or control you control them by fa by force why would god support this rebellion it was part of the nation's punishment for turning away from god you know they always turn away from god one first king eleven eleven. it may also have been f uh, from defeat in doing so in doing so I want to make sure I'm still online. Okay. In, do, in doing so, it may also uh, be, be also be uh, defeated. In doing so, God preserved David's line and kept intact his plan for Messiah to be a descent of David. And you can see that in 2 Samuel 7, 16. When we see division, especially in church, that split, we wonder what God will have done us do uh, what we wonder what god will have us do god desire unity that's why i say united we still uh, we stand divided will fall but why we should always work together work towards reconciliation or work together we must recognize that only god knows the future he may allow division in order to fulfill his greater purpose rehoboam setting for cheap Limitations in exchange for the real thing is a poor way to live. In every area of his life, Rehoboam consistently, consistently traded away what was real for what was counterfeit. Giving wise and unwise counsel by his advisors at his coronation, he chose to grab for power and control rather than to take patiently the counsel, the counsel of those older and wiser than he and treat his people with kindness. He went to listen to his friends without giving him wrong advice instead of listening to elder uh, uh, people that know better than him. Although this, his position came from God, he chose to abandon God. This unwise decision made him weaker, than, weaker rather than stronger. Whenever God puts you in a position or you even wake up every morning, whenever God keeps you in this world, you wake up every morning, you must, I say, what do I say? You must obey God. When you abandon God, you are putting yourself in trouble. So that's what everyone do here. Even if he knows God gave him that position, although his position came from God, he knows God gave him that position, but he chose to abandon God. When you abandon God in everything you do in your life, whether the small little things and the big things and invisible things, you are you are out for trouble. And that's what Rehoboam doing go, going through this time. This unwise decision made him weaker rather than stronger. When you abandon God, you are very you're gonna get weaker and weaker and weaker. As a result, look at what is happening in the whole world. The more they are taking the Bible out of church, Bible out of school, Bible out of the community, the word of God out of everything we do. But people want to put all the sort of nonsense in the world instead of putting the word of God. See how weaker everybody is getting. See how weaker the world is getting. But God will help us in the name of Jesus because the Bible said. The favor and prayer of the righteous one are bell us much. I pray that the still righteous one that God can hear our prayer because he said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. I pray that a lot of us people out there we, we, we humble ourselves and pray that God will hear our prayer in the name of Jesus. As a result, he was invaded by Egyptians and stripped of the rich, rich, riches he inherited from David and Solomon to replace them. He had cheap browsing, cheap browse copies made. Throughout the early part of his reign, Rehoboam for, uh, for between obeying God and going his way, obeying God and going his way. He's a lukewarm man. Like Jesus said, uh, uh, you better be, be, be warm or, or hot. You, you better be hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, he will spit you out of his mouth. That's what Rehoboam doing here. He's, uh, he's either obeying God, going his way, going, so he doesn't know what he wants in life. We got to know what we want and stand for what we we believe. If you can't stand for anything, you fall. So you got to stand for something, my brothers and sisters. Rebram here could not stand for anything. He doesn't know what he's doing. Outward appearance were kept up, but his inward attitude were evil. 
Following in the tradition of David gave Rab many opportunities for real greatness. Instead, he ended up with divided and broken kingdom. However, whenever you do, whatever you do in this world, accept God, obey God, because if not, you're going to be broken, not just broken kingdom, broken home, broken heart, broken everything. Everything you do, you'll be broken because you're not satisfied. Only when you have God, whatever you have, you will be satisfied. We don't want to be like Rehoboam here, who was broken and uh, uh, ended up with a divided and broken kingdom. And as his broken kingdom, he has broken heart. He has problem here and then everything is not working well because he did not keep the first command of opening God in this in this pericope. How much of real living, how, how much of real living have we traded away for the things that do not last? Wow. I said it again, repeat, Reverend. I said, how much of real living have you, let me personalize, have you, you, you all over the world traded away for the things that do not last? Wow. That's what the Bible say. We should heap up our treasure to to heaven where, where no no canker worm no incense will eat the body if we put it in this world oh yeah somebody was mess with it we trade healthy bodies for monetary excitement personal integrity for fast fading wealth money and uh, going to rituals and doing nonsense honesty for lies god's wise guidance for our selfish ways god is saying go right we're going left we sin when we willingly give little value to the real things, uh, to the real thing God has already given us. Our counterfeit lives, many fool some people, but they never fool God. You can fool anybody, you can fool, but remember you cannot fool God. So we sin, you sin, you willingly to give little value to the real thing, but remember God has already given us our counterfeit life, your counterfeit lives, many fool some people, but they will never fool God. Yet in spite of what he sees in us, God offer mercy, it's a merciful God, are you a self managed enterprises counterfeit at best, or have you placed yourself in God's care? Do the decision you make today need a second consideration in light of Rehoboam's example? Because you have listened to this Bible study, because you hear, have you decided to change your life? Have you decided to put everything you do, your decision towards God? Strength and accomplishment of Rehoboam. Fourth and last king of the United of United Nation of Israel, but only for a short time, fortified his king king and achieved a measure of popularity. Witness and mistake followed on wise advice and divided his kingdom. We should not follow on wise advice like Rehoboam. We should learn. The Bible is here for us to read and learn. Every bad thing people do, uh, bad uh, things they did, uh, um, wrong things they did, we need to do right on that place because that's why the Bible is there for us to learn. So his mistake and witness, he follow uh, on wise advice and divided his kingdom. We don't want to do that. Married foreign woman as his father Solomon has done. We don't want to do that. Abandon the worship of God and allow idolatry to flourish. Everything he did was what God told his father and himself not to do, but he went ahead and do everything God said we shouldn't do in his word. This is his word. God does not have to speak to you. Uh, oh, come on. No, it's there. When you open it, you see. And whatever he said, don't do, don't do. And even when in the Bible, when some of them have done it and make mistakes like Rehoboam, now we learn lessons. We should learn from them good lessons and bad lessons so that we will not do the bad lessons. We we'll do the good lessons. So lessons from his life Thoughtless decision often led to exchanging what is most valuable for something of far less valuable. Every choice we make has real and long-lasting consequences. Every decision you make, remember, it has real and long-lasting uh, consequences. You must bear your consequence. Vital statistics were Jerusalem, occupation king of the United Kingdom of uh, Israel, and later of the southern kingdom of Judah. Relative, father Solomon, mother Neham, son Abijah, wife Mecca, contemporaries Jeroboam, Sherek, and Shema. Key verses. After Rehoboam position as king was established and he had become strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law, the Lord.
Abandon the law of the Lord. Second Chronicles 12, 1. Rebel story is told in 1 Kings 11, 43, 14, 31, and 2 Chronicles 9, 31, 37. He also mentioned in Matthew 1, 7. Before the nation split, the center of worship was in Jerusalem. Let's read uh, 11, verse 13. Verse 13. We are in Bible study. Sorry for the little gap that happened to before. The priests and the Levites from all their district throughout the Israel sided with him. The Levites even abandoned their their postland and uh, pottery. So before the nation split, the center of worship was Jerusalem, and people flocked there for the for for three great annual religious festival during the rest of the year other worship service uh, and rituals were conducted in the tribal territories by priests and livers who live who live throughout the land they offer sacrifice taught uh, they offer sacrifice taught god laws and encouraged the people to continue to follow god and avoid paganism avoid pagan influences after the nation split jeroboam the king the new king of israel saw these priests and levites as threat to, to his new government because they retained loyalty to jerusalem now the, the capital of judea so he appointed his own priests effectively banding the levites from their duties and forcing them to move to the southern kingdom now going against the word of god and going against his father's uh, uh, way the god's way that directed his father and now he's going against him banding the levites from their duties and forcing them to move to the southern kingdom jeroboam's pagan priests encouraged idol worship with the absence of spiritual leaders the new northern kingdom was in danger of abandoning ab abandoning god these people obeyed god rather than jeroboam by their actions they preserved their integrity and strengthened the southern kingdom in the future most of the people in the kingdom in the northern kingdom will go along with the evil desire designs of the kings hoping to benefit by cooperating don't follow their example my brothers and sisters and rationalize away god's teaching in order to gain earthly reward Every time you're giving, you're taking that little reward to, to, to leave God's teaching, you are in trouble. So don't you ever follow the examples and rationalize away God's teaching in order to gain that little reward. Here Israel refers to Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 12 verse 1. After Rehoboam's position as king was established and he had become strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law of the Lord because they had been unfaithful to the Lord. So here Israel refers to Judah, the southern kingdom. During these first three years on the throne, Rehoboam made an attempt to obey God. And as a result, Judah pr prospered. But then at his peak of pop popularity, power, he abandoned God. You know, there's something about this power and popularity that make people just divide from what they're doing right and start doing wrong because they want to go to the worldly people. You know, popularity, be careful. He abandoned God. The result was destruction because God allowed Judah to be conquered by Egypt. How could this happen? Often it, more, it, often it is more difficult to be a believer in good times than in bad times. Tough times push us towards God, but easy times can make us feel self-sufficient and self-satisfied. I made it, you know how Nebuchadnezzar said it. When everything is going right, guide your faith closely, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to say that. I say when everything is going right, especially when God answers your prayer, guide your faith because that is where the devil in the pit of hell will come from everywhere it might come from family from friend you don't know but you will come because it's a very tricky man what does he come to do still kill and destroy so be careful now when everything is going well your, your prayer will be answered you're doing well enjoying guide closely your faith guide your faith closely a record of this invention has been found on egypt egyptian sto stone that says shek and army penetrated as a far north as the sea of galilee of, of, of the sea of galilee in the northern kingdom egypt was not 
Egypt was not the world power it had once been, and Shekhar wanted to restore his nation to its former greatness. He was not strong enough to conquer both Israel and Judah, but he managed to destroy key cities in Judah in an effort to regain control of trade routes and great dissension among the people. God easy his judgment when Israel leaders confess their sins, humble them, uh, themselves, like I said, say if my people who will confess their sin, humble them, say we hear, I recognize God's justice in punishing them. It is never too late, my brothers and sisters, to repent. Even in the midst of punishment, regardless of what we have done, God is a merciful God. God is willing to receive us back into his fellowship any time, any day, as long as we recognize that we're doing what wrong, confess our sin, humble ourselves and pray, like he said in this world, in this uh, in this uh, pericope. God is willing to receive us back into his fellowship. Are you struggling and alone because sin has broken your fellowship with God and said, I say, oh, you can't go anywhere. Tell him to shut up because confessions and humility will open the door to receive God's mercy again and again. So you need to know when to stop sinning because the consequences are there, but God is a merciful God. He will receive us once you confess and humble yourself. So confession and humility will open the door to receive God's mercy. Serving the kings of, of other land was the price Judah had to pay for disobeying God. Every time you disobey God, you have there's a price you have to pay. The nation's leader thought uh, the nation's leaders though they could succeed thought they could succeed succeed in their own strength, but they were wrong. When we rebel against God, when we think we can do everything without God, we got our strength, oh, my strength is my, well, we always pay for it because God is everything, everything you do. When we leave God out of our lives in anything we do, small, big, or I don't say visible or hiding, or we lose more spirituality than we, we, uh, we ever gain money. So don't underrate God. Don't look God down. Don't, whatever you do, oh, I can do it myself. Everything you do in this world, as long as you are living, God is involved. God should be involved because otherwise you reach your, you, you, you will lose your spirituality more than ever you gain fi uh, financially. So we lose more, spiritu more spiritually than we ever gain financially. So be careful so that you won't go through that. How irony that the Pure gold of Solomon's temple was replaced by cheaper browns. Rehoboam tried to maintain the tappings and appearance of former glory, but he could not measure up. When God is when God is no longer central in your life, when God is no longer central in your life, oh, what did I say? When God is no longer central in your life, maintaining the appearance of a Christian life becomes superstitious. You become fake. Become something you don't want to do. Outer beauty must come from inner strength. Amen, somebody. When you see that beauty, when you see that person strong doing, the inner the inner, inner strength is what brings out the outer beauty. The inner strength is what brings out the outer thing, whatever you're doing. So you can't fake Christianity. You can't face uh, to be a God with God because God sees everything. He sees all of us and He sees what we're going through. My brothers and sisters, Rehoboam's story is strategic. Is a... Uh, Tra tragic. Rehoboam's story is tragic because he had not set his heart on seeking the Lord. It is dangerous to put off responding to God. God asks us for firm commitment and unless we respond by trusting him completely, not half, not tomorrow, and then next morning, not morning, completely, morning after 24-7, Completely, we will find ourselves alienated from him like Rehoboam is going through now. First King 15.3 says, Abinadjah committed many sins, but the Chronicles account as only positive comments about him. For the most part, Abinadjah was no doubt a wicked king. The writer of Chronicles chose to highlight the little good he did in order to show that he was still under God's covenant. And uh, God's covenant promised to David. Because of Abinadjah fairly speech to Jeroboam in 13.4, 12, he was spared the immediate consequence of his sin. Jeroboam armies was cursed because of the golden cups they carried with them. It was as though they had put sin into a physical form so they could hollow it around. Consider carefully the things you cherish. 
if you value anything more than God, I kind of emphasize this enough in my Bible, sorry, my preaching. If you value anything more than God, it becomes your golden calf and will, will one day drag you down. Let go of anything that interferes with your relationship with God. What did I say? Let go, let go with anything that will interfere with your relationship with God because then you'll be able to put God first. Let's read chapter 13, Pericope, uh, Second Chronicle, chapter 13, verse 8. And now you it's okay. And now you plan to resist the kingdom of the Lord, which is in the hands of David descendant. You are indeed a vast army and have and have with you the golden calves that Jeroboam made to be your God. But did not you drive out the priests of the Lord? the sons of Heron and the Levites, and make priests of your own as the, pe as the peoples of other lands do. Whoever comes to concentrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may become a priest of what, 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 of what are not God. As for us, the Lord is our God, amen, and we have not forsaken him, amen. The priest who serve the Lord as sons of error and livers, and that's what God assists them. Every morning and evening, they present burnt offerings and fragrant incense to the Lord. They set out the bread on the ceremony uh, clean in, uh, uh, table and light the lamp on the golden lamp, lamp stand every, every evening. We are observing the requirement of the Lord our God, but you are forsaken observing the requirement of the Lord your God, but you are forsaken Him. God is with us. He is our leader. His priests with their trumpet will sound and battle cry against you. Men of Israel, do not fight against the Lord, the God of your fathers, for you will not succeed, not at all. Whenever you fight God, you are a failure. Before even you started, devil is just messing with you. You are a failure. Do not fight God. You see what I read there? Abinadab criticized that Jeroboam's low standards in appointing priests. Anyone is qualified to represent a God that is worthless. To represent the Lord God Almighty, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the lily of the valley, the present, the many present, or many great, or many potent. However, a person must live by God's standard to represent God, not man's. Those appointed to positions of responsibility in your church should not be selected mainly because they, they voluntary, are influential, or are highly educated. Instead, they should demonstrate second doctrine, dedication to God, and strong spiritual character. And you can see that in second, the Timothy 3. Although at number by the Israel, Judah won this conflict by depending on God's help. Some kings in Judah history fought on God, but not one Israel king constantly, consistently follow God. Some kings in Judah history for, uh, focused on God, but not one Israelite king consistently follow God or follow Jeroboam adultery or serve Baal. As a result, Israel experienced God's punishment many years before Judah did. Judah had an advantage, the temple with his sacrifice and the loyal uh, prince and the prophet was in the southern kingdom. Many of Judah's kings were good, at least for part of their reign. However, an idolatrous king reign his rule was followed by that of a God-honoring king who re reformed religious life. Also, the idolatry kings usually serve for a much shorter time than the good ones. Than the good ones. The result was that true faith in God can stronger can true. The result is that true faith in God run stronger and deeper in Judah than in Israel. But it was still not up to God's standard. Asan reign, Asan, Asan reign was marked by peace because he did what was good and right in the eyes of the of his God. This refrain is 
This refrain is often repeated in Chronicles. Obedience to God leads to peace with God and others. Obedience to God leads with peace with God and others. In the case of Judas kings, obedience to God leads to national peace just as God had promised centuries earlier. In our case, obedience may not always obey, bring peace with our enemies, but it will, it will bring peace with God and complete peace in his future king, kingdom. Obeying God is the first step on to path of peace. Obeying God is the first step to the path of peace. Simply attending worship service is not enough to secure God's peace, my brothers and sisters, like Asen. We must also actively remove anything that is offensive to God. Obey God, becoming more active in church, attendance, attendance or good deals will still leave us in turmoil if we have failed to eliminate sinful practice from our lives. You go to church every day, you do everything you do, but you did not eliminate sins out, uh, out of your life. You still live uh, uh, tamos and uh, you fail to eliminate sinful practice from your life. You are still as someone that is unbeliever. Uh, someone that a Christian, uh, uh, Sunday, Sunday medicine, you don't even know who you go to church. Maybe you go to church for people or for your what you dress up. We should con continually ask God to help us remove any source of temptation from our lives. Rest on every side means that Judah had peace with all her neighbors. Times of peace are not rest for resting. They allow us to prepare for times of trouble. King Asa recognized the period of peace as the right time to build his defense. The moment of attack will be too late. It is also difficult to withstand spiritual attack unless defenses are prepared beforehand. If you are not ready for battle, battle come unto you unexpectedly. You might not have your battle of war things you want to do the war with. Decisions about how to face temptations, my brothers and sisters, must be made with cool heads long before we feel the heat of temptation. Because if you are not ready, they will sweep your leg and you, before you know it, you are done deal. Build your defenses now before temptation strike. If you are facing battles, Right now in your life, you feel you cannot possibly win. Don't give up, my brothers and sisters. I say, don't give up. Don't throw it in the tower. In the face of vast hordes of army soldiers, I said, pray for God's help. Recognizing his powerlessness against such a mighty army, this secret of victory is first to admit the fruitful, the, the, the fertility of unheeded human effort and then to trust God to serve you. Anything that God says will never give us a load we cannot carry. Anything that comes to you, you know it's too heavy for you. Brother, it's not too late. Brother, sister, it's not too late. Brethren, it's not too late. Child of God, it's not too late. You just get on your knees like I said did because you know your powerlessness against such mighty uh, problem and temptation will not be enough. The secret of victory is first to admit the fertility of unheeded human effort and then trust God to serve you and save you as we are praying Praying God will save you. His power, the power of God works best through those who recognize their limitation. Whenever you know that, oh, I can't do this, God, I, I ask myself into your heart, I'm into your heart, God will showcase himself. Check that out in Pericope, 2 Chronicle 12, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It is those who think they can do it all on their own who are in greatest danger today. When you say, oh, I can do it all. You know, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But a lot of you have changed it. I can do, I can do all things through me who strengthens myself. No, be careful now. Because you don't have to say it like I'm saying it now. But in your mind, in your attitude, in your action, you are saying it. You will go nowhere. You will fall like Jeroboam. We don't want to be like Jeroboam. We don't want to be like Jeroboam. We want to be like the children of God that God has created us to be. To serve him. To obey him. To show him that he's God all by himself. So my brothers and sisters, we should always keep God in our center of our life and put God in everything we do. Because it's those who think they can do it all on their own who are in greater danger. But if you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, you are in a, in a, in a world of uh, a blessing and peace. So let us pray. Every time we finish our Bible study, we have three prayer points. Let us pray. God protect me. God protect 
me from temptation and evil evil in the mighty name of jesus let's pray that prayer god protect me from evil god protect me from temptation and evil in the mighty name of jesus god protect us everyone online all over the world all social media that come across this father protect all of us from temptation do not let us into temptation but protect us from temptation and evil in the mighty name of jesus all my children all over the world as a geo father i pray for all my children all over the world the vessels of christ members all over the world father i pray for all of them father protect us from temptation protect us from evil and do not lead us to the, in the mighty name of jesus father do not let us be into, protect us from temptation and uh, and evil in the mighty name of jesus do not uh, let us be into temptation do not let us be into evil and even if they come father give us strength to go through it mama mala tetia lete tata mashiki laba side laka laba siki laba sindia father in the mighty name of jesus god protect us from temptation and evil in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray and the next prayer said god cover this tuesday bible study with the blood of jesus as we do bible study every day it's always something like i see the interval you know something happened but father i keep on covering this prayer this bible study every day every tuesday with the blood of jesus father and the wall of fire while this prayer even as we we sent uh, all these things all these messages to the world father let it be that they receive salvation let it be that they obey you more let it be that they go out of their sin and come into your domain to do right unto you. Father, I pray that we all do right unto you, obey your word and do right and live an uh, abundant life because you are God that gives us abundant life. Take us away from the wicked devil that comes steal and destroy. Father, in the name of Jesus, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. Take us from that uh, idiot but bring us into your domain, Father, that you don't give us abundant life, Father. Let your God, let your blood of Jesus continue to cover the uh, Tuesday Bible study in the mighty name of Jesus. The second prayer, the third prayer, God don't let us give up in the mighty name of Jesus in the midst of bad time when things just go so, so bad we don't know what to do. Oh God, do not let us, Almighty everlasting Father, do not let us give up in bad time, the midst of, do not, God, don't let us give up in the midst of bad times in the mighty name of Jesus. All over the world, Father, I pray, do not let us give up in the midst of bad times. Every time bad times, bad things come, or bad times of our life, or tough times of our life, struggle time of our life, suffering time of our life, painful time, do not let us give up, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, I beg you, Father, do not let us give us la kanata tata ye la kisiki la ye paladi ye lata ye masuku le poshiki le kilibi zakalara la matika lata. Father, do not let us give up in the mighty name of Jesus in doing bad time or good times in the mighty name. Of, do not let us give up because we might good times is okay. We just keep on going. But it's if you decide our good time, do not let us give up because that is the time that will come to us. Do not let us give up in our bad times in the mighty name of Jesus, my brothers and sisters. This end up our Bible study for today, and I'm so glad that we made it. We finally made it with everything the devil planned. With he didn't succeed, we finally made our Bible study, and that today I'm so glad we we are done. And now every time I'm done with Bible study, I always put the music back. But I thank God, God, I bless Your holy name for this Bible study, and I pray as Your word spread, as Your word goes all over social media. Every time we send it every day daily. Continue to uh, uh, give salvation. Continue to allow your children to receive you as a Lord and Savior. You are God. Lord. We point you. To, we point you to them, God. We point Jesus to them, God. It's all about you, God. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Holy Spirit. It's not anything about us. I'm just a mad piece. I'm just a servant you sent to do this. But Father, after all said and done, you use me as a mad piece. Father, as your cloth. Oh, as your celebrate. Oh, Father. Father, I pray that as this word goes. Let your children repent. Let them see remorse. Let them see the reason to change from the ways of, of, of the world, but to live your life, the life, the life you want us to live, Father. Help all of us to live the way you want us to live. 
and let us change from the wicked ways, change from our sinful ways, change from the things we do wrong. Help us, God, that as this world is going to the world, let your, your world be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and let us receive you and obey you and listen to your voice and do what you call us to do. And after all said and done, let your glory shine and you gain glory in our life. All the vanities of Christ members all over the world, you gain glory in our life. You gain glory in our church. You gain glory in our homes. You gain glory in our marriage. You gain glory in our schools. We gain glory in our community. You gain glory in our country. You gain glory in our city. You gain glory in our villages. We gain glory in our every department of our life father gain glory and after all and done devil have no power in where we are because you have taken everything and empty us to worship you in jesus much less name we pray and brothers and sisters i love you love you and love you but god loves you more virtue org virtue org amen god bless you and we'll end with the music amen Amen. Holy Spirit, give me the spiritual discernment and guidance. Make me sensitive to you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Feel me, Lord. please, Lord. Feel me. Holy Spirit, give me God's divine intervention. I'm hungry for your presence and anointing. Praise the Lord, somebody. Let's end our Bible study today. Help me to receive insight. Please turn my night today. Be with me in all my tough times. So that I will go.